Hey there folks and welcome back to another episode on the Draw Mode of Garage YouTube channel. Today I'm doing something probably completely pointless and 100% stupid. But I went to the junkyard and I bought me a transmission. And uh, I've got a little red twisted up looking Chevrolet S10 that lost overdrive. So I went ahead and bought me a cheap transmission out of a possible good donor truck. It's sitting here on my currently Boeing makeshift table. So this is an experiment. We're gonna stick this transmission in. I put the Transgo kit into it, Corvette servo. I got some high quality Chinese uh, Supertech Walmart transmission fluid. It seems to be a transmission fluid shortage. So I got all they had, which is high mileage. So uh, stay tuned. We'll see if we can get this transmission in and see if it freaking works. All right, there we go. We got the S10 in the garage in my massive, giant, huge garage with all the room and uh, all the lights. I need to get on Amazon, order me some lights. I need to get on Amazon, order me a lot of stuff. I need a ceiling too, maybe some concrete. But we got the back wheel up on uh, back wheels up on ramps, fronts on uh, jack stands. Best a guy can come up with around here. I have my vast uh, pile of goodies here. And like I said, this is the transmission I got from the junkyard. Now there's a method, there's a method to the madness. If you're if you're transmission hunting, and you have a local junkyard, you want to look for something as low miles as possible, preferably wrecked. If it's been crashed, that's probably why it's in the junkyard. If you find something on with, you know, 100, 150 thousand miles on it that's not been crashed, and uh, you can't tell if the engine's blown up, it may have lost transmission. That's why it's in the junkyard. You know, you never know. You never know the story. So I found this, this was in a uh, throttle body fuel injected, I think it was early 90s Chevy half ton two wheel drive pickup truck. And uh, first thing I did was check the transmission fluid and uh, it was old fluid, but it was still red. It didn't smell like it had been burned to death, which is, uh, which is good. If you're looking to buy a used transmission, you wanna find something that doesn't have soot black burn up tranny fluid. This truck actually has one of them transmissions in it. And uh, See, when I got the truck, it had sat for years and years and years. That's why it's rotted out. Body's rotted out. Uh, but I didn't give hardly any money for this thing. But it didn't have any overrun braking. No, no overrun braking when you downshifted. And uh, uh, something else happened to it. I don't remember what else. I think it lost third and four, three, four clutch back burn up. Uh, but anyway, I pulled that transmission out. Went to a different junkyard, not the same one I got this one from. And they wouldn't. It was the kind of place where they wouldn't let you look at the vehicle. You just say, hey, I need this transmission. They'd say, yeah, we got this in stock. Here you go. And uh, the fluid in that particular training, the one that's in there now, was soot black and awful. And I made the mistake of going ahead and using it, thinking that if it was a bad transmission, I'd get my money back. Needless to say, the truck's on jack stands now. I did not get my money back, and that transmission was junk. It lasted about two months, and then it had a catastrophic failure of some kind, uh, it doesn't want to shift right. You put it in gear, it barks the tires, it shoots fluid out of the vent. No overdrive anymore, it's a mess. I'm not even going to, I'm probably not even going to try to rebuild it. It's just going to go straight to the junk pile. So, I didn't learn any lessons, and I bought another used transmission. And then I even spent some money on it. See them little boxes over there? One of those is for 4 Lady E. That was my last episode video thing. And the other one is a 700 2 and 3 reprogramming kit which promptly went into this transmission. So I put the reprogramming kit in, Corvette servo in, and this is one other thing I wanted to talk about. Oh God, my leg needs to operate. In the office here, I got a, ordered a boost valve, and you can get these real cheap on Amazon or uh, eBay or whatever. This is the 500 boost, and uh, I would highly recommend going with a bigger boost valve. Uh, if you get the Transgo kit, it'll it'll tell you why. Uh, but it increases line pressure across the board. Um, and it firms up the shifts as long as the transmission's in overdrive or drive on the, on the lever. So I ordered that and I was surprised to death, but there's a uh, spot on the instructions. I'll just go ahead and show you those. Right here, 
flat spot of boost valve or place flat end of boost valve on the spot that fits. Don't use size A. So 422 and up is what you need. 471 and up is, uh, is good stuff. Right here, small block use 422, big block use 472, full race use 500. And mine had a 471 in it. And I didn't see any sense in going up to a 500. So that one's gonna sit on the shelf or I'm gonna sell it one, I don't know. But I just reused the one that was in there. Put this shift kit in, I had valve body too because it was a late model valve body. I went with, uh, let me see, right here I had to put the new TV valve in because I follow those instructions right there. Um, right here, for the line bias valve, you have to refer back to the front page, 422, red spring, 471 up, blue spring. So I got the blue spring for the line bias valve. Didn't do that, obviously, it's still an automatic. I didn't go stick on there. And I've, I've actually used that option on this shift kit. It works really good, especially if you do it right. Uh, shift firmness, drill these holes between these, you know, between 073 and 086 for second gear shift firm feel and so on and so forth. But we did all that stuff. Here's another important part on the servo. 093, 95-1, and 553. So the 093 and 951 are the same as an unmarked Corvette style servo piston. And then uh, firma shift, use the 093-951 or Corvette style. Small engine, okay to use 553, don't use 554. And of course mine had 554 in it. So I threw that away promptly and ordered me a Corvette servo, which is now in there. See it? It's in there, I promise you, it is. So now I've got the white pipe off. You have to take the white pipe off of these bastards to get the transmission to come down. At least I had to. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think the top of the bell housing hits the bottom of the truck and you can't get it out. So you got to drop the white pipe or cut the white pipe off or something or, you know, whatever. So I got the exhaust off and that's as far as I've made it so far. I'm going to work on uh, getting this thing the rest of the way down. There shouldn't be much fluid left in this transmission because it sure shot a lot out when I was driving down the interstate at 75 mile an hour and it started shooting fluid all over the place and it looked like I was on fire and the three truck drivers behind me were swerving and pulling over because they were getting splattered with transmission fluid. So there can't be much left in there. So uh, I'm going to continue uh, ripping this out and uh, we'll go ahead and I hope that thing works. I'll go ahead and put that up in there and uh, fill it with fluid and we'll go for a test drive. Stay tuned. Okay, I've got a bit of a mess going on down here. As you can see, that white pipe won't come out either. It's all jammed up and bound up. But what I wanted to point out, it's not really showing up on the phone. That fluid is uh, brown and it smells very metallic. I've never smelled transmission fluid like this. I can't, I can't even describe it, but it's very metally, kind of coppery, like but yeah something definitely exploded in there i guess so i just wanted to document that but yeah anyway so working on getting this thing down oh god oh got the converter off my dog's grouchy still got to do the cooler lines I got two more bell housing bolts up top and two more cross member bolts. The drive shaft's unbolted, I just gotta slide it out of the tail shaft. And then down she goes. Oh, finally. We got that piece of junk out. That was a nightmare. But also got the exhaust out. This is something else we gotta put back together. Great. I was never able to install all three of the collector bolts on the driver's side or passenger side by myself. I had to drive this thing to a shop and have them do it on a lift, which is obviously something I currently don't have the luxury of using in my garage. But I'm going to try to manhandle that bastard underneath the truck, manhandle it up on the jack. Oh, God. Stuff a converter in it. I don't know. Should I do that first or should I do it after I get it? I don't know. On the jack. And then jack it up and 
get her on the dowel pins and try to shove a couple bolts in it. Oh my god, wish me luck. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see So, uh, it's time to have a moment of silence. Okay, that's over with. I got that transmission in. I got it full of fluid. Had it up on jack stands. Dropped it in gear. Started with reverse. Reverse worked. Wheel spun backwards. Uh, put it in neutral. The wheel spin forward. Just, I think that's normal. And I dropped her in first. And it had first gear. And uh, it had second. It didn't have third or fourth. But it was really low on fluid. So I put it back in neutral. And then stand still on the brakes. Uh, my uh, my brakes don't work very good on the back, but got the wheels to stop mostly and then i kind of grounded into park and checked the fluid and yeah it was like a gallon low so i topped it off and i uh manually shifted it on the stands again and it damn near wanted to jump off the uh the jack stand when you when you hit second gear you know because we do have this shift kit in it and that servo and all that stuff now one two shift is great two three shift is not so I was in here looking, and I'm like, did I forget to do something? Right here, this step. I know, I know I put this back in. The pin and the uh, piston. And spring. I know I, put, I know I did it. And then I was like looking at the valve body page. I'm like, did, did I forget something over here? No, I didn't. Second accumulator spring, yeah, I mean, second works. Line bias, I know I did that. Red spring. Uh, I don't remember which one, but I know I did that. I, I got the other the other spring and valve in there. I didn't do that. Three, four shift valve. Hmm. I don't think I did anything with that because my truck has like 308s in it. Yeah, so anyway, that was my first desperate attempt at trying to figure out what I did wrong. But then I realized I know what I did wrong. I went to the junkyard and bought a transmission and put it in my vehicle. Again. Looky here. Hang on, let me, let me do an adjustment on this stand thing. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. this transmission oh god you see that I'm just grabbing this input shaft look at all that the other transmission had more slop in the input shaft the only way that thing develops slop is if a clutch pack is fried I believe if a clutch pack is fried, and then you go to apply a piston to apply the clutch pack, the piston's gonna go, it's full, full travel. And that clutch pack is still going to be loose, not fully applied or applied at all. And I believe my 3-4 clutch is smoked in that transmission I just stuffed in that S10. So, whatever. This has been a long story, let me, let me just end it now. Uh, you've been watching another episode on the Jaw Motive Garage YouTube channel. It's more like the Jaw Motive experiment. Don't do what I do because I'm an idiot YouTube channel. For real. I mean, I'm just looking for ways to save money. And most of the time it just costs me more time, more frustration, and more money. Now, I would have looked like a genius if that transmission was good. Because, you know, you stick a correction kit in the valve body, put your $150, $200 transmission in, and it works. Wonderful. That's what everybody wants to hear. In this case, it didn't work out. I should have pulled the pump out. I should have pulled the input shaft out. 
input drum out, and I should have looked at that transmission. I should have. But that wasn't the point. The point was, can I get lucky and get this transmission to work? This one didn't work out, guys. So, uh, looks like we've got more content, more videos to make. And uh, I still want to take that one apart because that one, that one was uh, scary when it blew apart. So, we'll see in the next video. Um, like I said, uh, maybe I should put this at the beginning of the video. Don't, don't do things like I do. Obviously, it's not a good idea. If you got the money, have somebody else fix it. And you don't want to, I mean, pay somebody else to do it. Uh, but this is a lot, of, a lot of time and frustration. But I don't mind doing it. I just like to complain a lot. So, anyway, we'll see in the next video. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Uh, like if you liked it. We'll see you in the next video. From up here The world seems small We can sit together